Hello, this is Dr. Scott McLean, and this is a YouTube broadcast about the Noble Active Implant. This present case, we are going to use a Noble Active Implant to replace a bad tooth. And you can see this front tooth has actually got some cavity around the post and around the crown, and has a very short clinical root. So this makes it an ideal space for an implant. In fact, this could be an immediate placement, but today this patient has chosen to do a two-stage surgery, meaning that the implant will be placed, some time will go by, and then we'll go back and do the things we have to do. Once the old crown was taken off, you can see the, the extent of the decay underneath the crown, showing that this tooth did have to come out. After two months of healing, the patient was ready to get their new noble active implant. So the patient had a very minor surgical procedure to place the implant level with the top of the bone, as you can see by the blue arrow. And this blue arrow shows the ideal position of the noble active implant, and it's also equally distanced between the two other roots. Now if we take a close-up look at the core of this body of this implant, we can see it has a tapering core with a large thread. And this large thread has a variable pitch design, meaning that the design of the thread is changing throughout the implant, as well as going from a very narrow to a very kind of square part on the top of the implant, allowing for a great stability as you put this implant in. So you usually get, quite typically get uh, 35 to Newton centimeters, up to 70 Newton centimeters, as recommended by the manufacturer. Now if you look at the top of the implant where it connects to the abutments and to the crown, you'll see a very unique connection that has a 0.25 millimeter wide platform shift. So if you add this together, you get a 0.5 millimeter platform shift on top of the implant where the abutment comes into the implant interface. Why is this important? This is important on implants because it allows for healing laterally. So the two uh, gingival fibers that are around implants heal laterally into the abutment interface. And it's thought that this would protect crustal bone loss. And it's this crustal bone loss that still remains a real question in implantology. But in fact, uh, the noble active implant is very promising in how it's showing to prevent crustal bone loss. So as you can see in this photo, the top part of this 0.25 millimeter collar is quite smooth. And this also aids in the healing of those crustal fibers. If we look further inside the implant, we can see it has a conical connection which gives you a very positive seat of the implant abutment into the implant, also further helping to seal out bacteria in this very sensitive area. Now if you look at this connection even a little bit deeper, you'll notice an internal hex. And this inter internal hex is an anti-rotational type of connection for the abutment. So when the abutment goes in and gets screwed in, there's an anti-rotational effect that happens on this interface which allows for a tight seating between the uh, abutment and the crown and the implant. Now after the implant has been placed for a while, the patient's going to return after the implant has become what they call osseointegrated. So it's integrated into the bone. So the patient returns in order to have a minor surgical procedure to open up the gum and then to put an immediate temporary abutment on. The immediate temporary abutment is a little screw with a little white cap that slides over and allows the dentist to put these two things together so that an immediate temporary crown can go on. And this allows for the patient to be healing and shaping the gum tissues in that sensitive front area because we want this to look great when this is all done. So the patient's going to wear the temporary crown for a little while to let the gums heal around the area and then we're going to come back and take an impression. Now at the impression appointment we also take another x-ray and you can notice on this x-ray that the bone is staying right up around the top of this implant which is just fantastic. And we can also notice that we're using a flared transfer coping or impression coping. So this is the piece that's going to get screwed on top of the implant and allow us to show the lab where this implant is relative to the other teeth. So when the flared transfer coping is placed in it picks up those tissues that have healed perfectly and then we'll pick up the new architecture with some light bodied impression material plus some medium body impression material to fill in around the area. So we do have a little hole through the custom tray which allows this to all happen in the open tray technique. 
Once the impression is removed, you'll see that the flared part is very accurately picking up the soft tissues along with the light body impression material. Now your lab will receive this. They'll pour up a soft tissue model, which you can see in pink, and this will act as a replica of what the gingiva looks like so that when they're making the crown, they can prepare the abutment, customize it, and then make it all fit together. Now during customization of the abutment, the lab will make a Duralay pattern that will fit exactly under the gingiva or under the gums to make it support the gums in the proper way and then also to support the uh, future crown coping that's going to be made. And what they'll do is make this pattern, they'll take it to the Forte scanner and in this picture it shows the Forte scanner touch scanning this uh, abutment and then this is going to be created so it's going to be put into a computer. And once in the computer your dental lab is going to design the abutment to make it so that it's going to be ready for milling in the plant that's in Malwa, New Jersey. So this gets transferred over the internet to Malwa and they bring back this pattern of your abutment and your crown. So you can see the white abutment in this particular case and you'll see a shaded coping. Now your lab takes this zirconia shell, the coping, and will start to add porcelain on bake the porcelain on and give it a very aesthetic look and do this through a customization procedure with the patient in place and so you get this beautiful beautiful crown that they make now once you have this back in your hands in your in your own dental chair what the uh, patient's going to have is then they'll have the uh, zirconia abutment is going to be placed in we're going to take an x-ray to confirm that this is actually the, the position that it's in tighten this abutment down and you can see in this particular uh, shot that the abutment is going to be tightened down to 35 newton centimeters because we know it's in final position. Once it's tightened down then we can place some cotton in the access hole in the back, cement this crown in with some uh, cement and when in this particular situation we're using just some resin cement and then try your crown back on to make sure that everything fits before cementation. And what you'll notice in this photo, this is a very key point is that the inside or the lingual, the tongue side, you'll see that the white abutment is actually above the gum level. And this is done, done intentionally so that when the crown is cemented on with the resin cement, it's all going to flow to the inside. So the margin on, on the outside where people see is just slightly below the gum, but the margin on the inside is going to allow for a quick, very quick uh, cement cleanup. Now one of the other little tricks I like to share with you is that when you're placing this abutment, you can use a little Duralay jig made by your lab to help guide this abutment in place. Because this is a very tight fitting abutment because of the conical connection and the uh, seal and the platform shifting. And so you need to have a little bit of guidance when you're placing it in. And then also using flared abutments really helps this case. So once the crown is cemented, I like to take a final x-ray to have a look for any unwanted cement that's down inside. But look at the result. This is just a fantastic result for the patient. The gingiva looks great. The crown color looks great. It looks very real with the translucency from the zirconia under core. And the, uh, the way that this looks is just going to be fantastic for the patient. So to go back over, there's a number of things why this case is so successful. I think it's number one, it's uh, using the Procera methods of making a customized crown and a customized abutment. And it's got a fantastic implant system utilizing platform shifting, conical seals, internal hex, and also these variable thread designs, which make this a very great design for in the anterior area. So give this a try and uh, I think you'll really enjoy this implant system. This is Dr. Scott McLean.